Wake up! You're asleep at the wheel! I'm Josh Wheel. This is our weekly review video. And this week, and if you followed me on Twitter, you saw this coming. But this week, we are reviewing the beautiful deluxe hardcover of X Men Mute Massacre. Now, this is the one that fits so beautifully and perfectly on the shelf next to other Marvel Deluxe hardcovers. It is an absolute beautiful collection, and it is the one to get. This one came out around late 2009, I think, so you can have to find it on eBay like I did, but I got a steal on it. I got this for like eight bucks. I was expecting it to come kind of beat up, and it was mint, like it had never been touched in the decade since it was made. And this is the way to go with Mutant Masker, because I know a lot of people I know Red Mutant Masker, like Mutant Masker, the same thing I always hear is like, oh yeah, like, but I haven't read the Power Pack issue, or like, oh, was there a Daredevil? I forgot, I didn't even realize that. And this is the collection that has all of it. Has the X-Men, the has the Uncanny X-Men issues, the X-Factor issues, the New Mutant issues, the Thor, the Power Pack, the Daredevil, all of it. Um, and I was actually kind of inspired by this. If you've watched the Chris Claremont's X-Men documentary on Amazon Prime. Uh, half the doc is just Chris, uh, Louis Simonson, and Andy Chenty sitting on a couch reminiscing, uh, which is the best. I could just watch that for hours. And they talk about this because this is the first big X-Men crossover. And it was so successful that then Editorial was like, you got to do this shit every year. And it kind of got forced on him year after year after year after that. But this one was just kind of naturally generated. It was, you know, that you had this tight-knit crew that were all great friends and all, like, really held and had the tight control over the X-Men stories. You know, they, they weren't trying to tell a story. It wasn't plot-driven. They were just continuing on the lives of these characters. Um, just continuing to tell the story of these people's lives. And they all kind of wanted to do a big one together. Um, and so, you know, looking at it, this is written by those four people. Chris Claremont, Louise Simonson, Anna Genti, and Walt Simonson. And that's how you get the weird arrangement of books that's involved. Because, uh, you know, Chris Claremont was writing uh, Uncanny X-Men and New Mutants. And Louise Simonson was writing X-Factor and Power Pack. And uh, Anna Genti was editing Uncanny X-Men and writing Daredevil. And Walt Simonson was doing art on X Factor and, you know, having, you know, sweet, not yet grandma and grandpa, but, you know, having sweet cuddles with Louise Simonson at home and uh, writing Mighty Thor. And so, you know, they all just wanted to play together. So those are the characters we get in this. And it is classic. Art. Now, the one kind of downside, although it's, it's weird. Because there's so many artists. It's like every issue has a different artist almost. We've got, but so many greats. John Amita Jr., Sal Buscema, Walt Simonson, Jackson Geis. We've got Terry Shoemaker, Brett Blevins, Alan Davis, Rick Leonardi. And while they all have their own style, it's really... This is probably the most cohesive art I've ever seen from multiple artists running across a story. That as you go issue from issue, yes, they're drawing characters different. We have characters drawn a little different as we go issue by issue, as we get different artists. But overall, the coloring, the feel, the shape, the facial, like, it's really consistent. Like, not once reading all of these in a row. And I'm talking about, like, I've just been going straight through it. Not once did I come across it and was like, oh, the art's really pulling me out. Like, happens all the time on X-Men crossovers. All the damn time. So the fact that this has so many artists, and yet, like, just feels smooth across all 13 issues um, is awesome. Um, it, it makes it really easy to digest. And this is... A classic. This is like the forgotten classic. Now, I know X-Men fans all know about the Mutant Massacre, and if you're a Gambit fan, you know about the Mutant Massacre, and if you're a Sinister fan, you know about the Mutant Massacre, you know, and those guys were all added into the lore afterwards. But, um, Mutant Massacre is really good. Like, it's really 
good comics and it's got the crews it's got all of your core characters that you love because you got the o5 and x factor you've still got kitty and nightcrawler this is what leads them to go off to excalibur um you've got colossus and you've got um you know obviously wolverine and um storm and you just you have it's this really great period we're talking right after 200 magneto's the headmaster he's running you've got the new mutants um you you know they're on issue 46 in this so they're at a really good spot where they've already got you know a fleshed out a full you know iliana and danny and uh magma and karma and you know all of these other characters are are you know they, they've kind of filled out their roster from their original set um and they just they the world is set in a really good place the character development and voices are really really tight um it's really well written and it's a seminal x-men story um i think we don't think of it as big as dark phoenix saga days of future past but um if we're going claremont era this should maybe be number three like you know this brood saga not you know um inferno genosha welcome to genosha Muir island saga uh proteus you know um like yeah there's a lot of other good stuff but um this is like number three like if you're going gold silver bronze this is ranking this is meddling alongside dark phoenix and days of future past this should be must own and this is the way to own it like as far as i'm concerned you know i was waiting to kind of purchase this and get it because i too like i hadn't read the power pack i hadn't read the daredevil um i had read the thor ones but kind of separate from this i'd known what they were um this is the way to get the whole story this is the beautiful one to have on your shelf um this is the edition and i just i can't say enough great things about it um this is classic if you're an x-men fan if you like x-men enough that you're seven minutes and 38 seconds into a review video on the asleep at the wheel x-men fan site then you need to find this on ebay because this is must own I'm trying to keep this a little shorter. I realize I've gone long on some of these, longer than I anticipated. Um, you know, the Mutant Massacre is a classic story. You know, we all know what it is. The Morlocks um, in the tunnels um, get killed by the Marauders. You know, uh, Angel taken down and loses his wings. Artie meets Leech. Artie meets Leech in this. Like, that alone is a Marvel milestone. Um, there's some interesting things uh one weird thing and it just kind of feels you know it's not the way the story would be told today but like the marauders like you start off with four or five marauders and then there's just constantly like more marauders like almost like it's a joke like just other random ass weird marauder characters but it, it kind of makes sense because if there were just four or five of them like the x-men would whoop their ass like it needs to be an overwhelming amount of marauders storming that tunnel killing all the morlocks um killing every mutant they can get a hold of um and so you know it it works there's some weird marauders most of them are forgettable um colossus drops a body which just so great because man like they're just surrounded by death everywhere and colossus is like fucking enough um i i i love seminal colossus moments you know he has He's the heart of a poet, you know, he's the gentle giant, and man, he has got pushed to the brink so many goddamn times. Um, great Colossus stuff in here, great Ilyana stuff, great Warren stuff, Warren, who most people like, you know, Warren who's regularly voted like the most boring-ass X-Men character. Uh, great Warren stuff in here, it's just so good. Um, so again, X-Men Mutant Massacre, this is the version to get, the 2009 deluxe hardcover um one last thing and i'm going to put post up on these sometime next week uh but i got my pins in from optic 
I got a Cyclops and a Nightcrawler. My little one has a Nightcrawler one. I have no idea what he did with it. I'll have to find it before I make the post. Um, but these are absolutely gorgeous. And if you like them, you should check out at Optic, O-P-T-Y-C-K, on the Twitter. Um, because I love this. It has joined my Jubilee and FCTM pin on my jacket now. Um, but that's all for this week. So again, Mutant Massacre, the bronze medal of the Claremont run, which is no small feat. Um, come back every Monday for another, um, come back every Monday for another recap. Hello. This is a little wheel. He's homesick today, so he's hanging out with me. If you like X-Men, who's your favorite yeah. X-Men? Is he on here? Nightcrawler? Nightcrawler, yeah. That's awesome. All right. Um, but that's it for us. So have a great weekend and wake up. You're asleep at the wheel. Push the red button.